to be long show. The place where you can make some money. You get some questions answered and you learn something. Today I decided to take a dose of my own medicine. So I'm gonna ask a few questions for y'all about me. I got a moderator over here and he gonna take us through it. Tell me something, Mr. Long. What is something you always have time for? Sleeping. <laughs> Grandkids. Always got time for anybody that asks me to do something. As long as they somebody that I deal with. If I deal with you, I got time for you. If I don't deal with you, don't ask me to do nothing because I'm going to tell you I'm busy. I heard that. Good answer. Uh, tell me something that uh, you never spend money on. Uh... I don't know. Money don't mean that much to me. So, it's hard to say what I won't spend money on. Uh, I don't think it's too much or nothing that I won't spend money on. Money is something people made up in order to have power. And I don't really respect money too much. True, true. Well, how do you feel about traveling to foreign countries? Uh, I'm good with other people doing it, but I'm straight on that. Not interested in going to another country. I know what's happening here, so people can come here and they get messed around. And so I ain't interested in getting messed around. With somebody here, I, I know what to expect from them. I go to another country and some little dude running up, grabbing my bags and somebody helping me or like I got a homeboy that's from Pakistan and on the wall at the airport they got wrote on there keep moving or be shot. <laughs> I don't know what that say. <laughs> uh, oh yeah okay well I can understand that. Well tell me this because I've seen a few. How do you feel about tattoos? I like them. I think they're cool, but I don't think people should get permanent tattoos. Um, I feel like God gave us a body and um, the way our bodies look, it can't get no better. So why should you mark it up thinking that you're cool? And like, but in moderation, because those people that's talking about they getting sleeves and getting tattoos all in their face, they just stupid to me. And, um, I'm not a walking billboard, so tattoos is kind of ignorant to me, uh, but they look cool. Mm. Well, you know what I call them, don't you? What? I call tattoos tramp stamps. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you take that with you now. Uh, have you ever met someone that uh, you no longer in contact with? Yeah, that's a whole bunch of people, so I think I want to kind of go through some of those. Uh, so one of them is the first one that I can remember is we always went to this store on Levinois, and I wanted the little Kool-Aid package. It wasn't just plain Kool-Aid, it was already sweet, and so... I was fussing. I done brought it up to the line and everything and kept getting told, no, I can't get it. I want the Kool-Aid points on it and I want the Kool-Aid because back then you could get collect Kool-Aid points and get stuff. So you could put something in the mail and you get something back. Now they don't have kids, nothing for the kids to do. Nothing in the cereal boxes or nothing. But anyway, I was crying for that and this lady said, oh, that's a cute little boy. He can get it. Let him get it. I'll buy it. And we didn't really see white people in Detroit. And she was white. And so I, I couldn't believe that. Yeah. So I, I remember that. And then uh, another one was my third grade teacher. When I was going to the fourth grade, she cried because she taught third and fourth grade. And she wanted me to be in her class in the fourth grade. And they weren't going to put her in my class unless my parents said that I can go in there. So... She, uh, I saw her crying in the accident for me to be put in her class because I was a good student. So I was put in her class in the fourth grade and 
that kind of motivated me with school. And then uh, I knew two, two little white boys that went to school with us. The only white boys I remember in the school. And their name was Donald and Albert. I think Donald was the toughest person I ever met in my life next to my daddy. He could whoop anybody. <laughs> and they wasn't bad boys, but it was just if you mess with them, Donald could fight. And I remember this big dude named Ernest mess with him or his brother Albert one day. And I'd never seen nobody beat nobody up like that before. He was crawling around the dude, like on his back, on his head, everything, beating him up. <laughs> we was in like the middle school. And then uh, uh, another dude named Paris, he, he, had, uh, he was the best looking dude that I had ever seen. I was in like the eighth grade, seventh grade. And uh, everybody wanted to fight him just because the girls liked him and stuff. And he used to beat the kids up when they, when they tried to fight him, but they always tried to jump him because he could fight and he had to run all the way home. And then uh, one of the other people that I was thinking about is these, they was all family, Vernon, uh, Latanya, and Ricky. I remember them because Latanya and Ricky was like my friends, but Vernon, I don't know what to consider him to be because he was bad. Like we was in kindergarten and, and he said, uh, who in the class, when the teacher left out the class, he said, who in here pee and doo doo at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking, I pee and doo doo at the same time. <laughs> but I ain't say nothing because, you know, I know what to think. We only in kindergarten. That's the first time I heard something like that. And uh, so, you know, we was all cool. And um, I can't really, uh, I, I think that's about all of the, you know, interesting people that was, that I, that I knew, but I can't, I don't never see them no more. Well, I tell you, you know, they say, saw that, been there, <laughs> you there. I had one other person though. He was real crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought about it. When I was in the army, there was a dude that he sold the drinks to everybody on our breaks and stuff. So when you're in the army, the army people rent out a whole hotel. Every room is army people. Usually it's like a day's in or something. And so his room had every kind of liquor you could think of. But he did everything, so I would say he was the most person that was a hustler to me that I ever saw in my life. Because one time I come out the child hall, there's everybody looking around, and everybody never got together like that because it's like over a thousand people. And so I go over there to see what's going on, and people spitting on the ground. And they got, I walked over there, it almost made me throw up when I looked at the spit. And so there's blood in it and mucus, everything. And he charging people for how, how close they're going to be to the spit. Like from $100 to $5, he was charging. And when, when it was all over and he was done with how much money he was collecting, the purpose of him collecting the money was for those people to watch him lick that spit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he got down on his hands and like in push-up position and he licked his tongue all the way through all of that spit and when he stood up it was coming from his tongue and he <laughs> swallowed <That's gross. laughs> and the next day i'm in the barracks and walking down the hall and everybody in the hallway and now Somebody done left some poop in the toilet. So he charged people to let them see him bite a little piece of that. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, man. That's gross. He, he put money past everything, huh? He didn't do anything. Do anything for money, huh? Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Well, I have one more. Well, it might end up being two questions, but I have another question for you, and I'm going to get off your back a little bit because you don't mind now talking about that. 
Do you have any any other nickname? Yeah, uh, Donut Flip. And so, there's one one person still called me that. One of my one of my daddy friends. He recently passed away. That called me that. Uh, rest in peace, J W. Uh, but Nate still called me that. They say, "What's up, doing the flip?" Nobody know what he even saying, but they call me doing the flip. <laughs> uh, I know the answer to that. But what is to be alone? Since uh, we got to that, so uh, be long stands for quite a few things. So be long is me. Be long is you. If you want to belong to the show. And also the initials stand for uh, basic learning opportunities and natural basic learning opportunities and natural growth. Good. Well, young fella, you got a piece of your own. Well, we thank you for that interview. Thank y'all for joining the Be Long Show. Now you heard a little bit from me, so don't be scared to do the interview.